guys, welcome to Skein Studio. My name is Kristen. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry as K10 and on Instagram as Skein Yarn. Uh, this is episode number 59 and today's Friday. Uh, I have no idea the date. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's been a week since I last spoke to you. Uh, I have a lot of stuff to show you. I've been quite busy, which is great. Um, so yeah, I suppose let's just get into it. Oh, I meant to mention as well, uh, I have changed again <laughs> where I podcast. I'm in the same room as I was in last week, um, but I am not facing the window. I've got the window that side. Uh, I just thought it was a little bit harsh a light. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be fiddling around with some settings too on the video because I don't really like it's to me the video looks quite grainy on uh, YouTube so I'm going to be trying to fix that this week uh, but I will say just behind me I've just it's usually just a white wall so I've set up just something nice here but um, I am actually planning to buy a sewing table for this area here I'm gonna set up a nice little sewing corner uh, so hopefully next time I podcast, I will have the sewing table. I'm still looking around. I'm not quite sure exactly what I want yet, but just something basic and long so I can put my sewing machine on there. Hopefully eventually a serger, because I'm looking at buying one of those. And um, my tiny little um, ironing board for the end. So yes. We shall see. Um, anyway, uh, let's get into it. the knitting part of the podcast. I um, am still working on the test knit that I showed last week. Um, if you didn't watch last week, uh, this is a test knit for Hohi, Hohi Locatelli. And um, she has posted pictures on Instagram, so... I'm guessing it's okay to show you guys. Uh, it's basically, I think the concept f uh, that she had was to design something that was a very simple pullover. Um, and yeah, it's sort of a nice boxy shape. I will show you. This is how much I've done. So I'm getting there. I actually put on probably about two to three inches this morning. I went to uh, the knitting group and I yeah had quite a few hours there so I um, managed to put um, on quite a few inches but yes it's just stocking it in the round um, it's I quite like stocking it in the round but I do find I have to give my hands a break qu quite regularly I get very sore hands I've got to be very careful um, but yes, what was I going to say? This is knit out of our my um, skein yarn in the Uptown sock uh, base, which is a single ply. The colorway is called uh, Eventide. It's a it is a speckled dyed um, color, so it does actually knit up quite variegated. It's got lots of pinks and purples. Um, yeah, and as you can see, it's going to be quite boxy, which is what the design is. It's meant to be that way. Uh, it's actually, I think my gauge was, I had more stitches. Uh, like, I was one or two stitches over the actual gauge uh, measurement in the pattern. But I figured, because it was such a big boxy shape, it wouldn't matter too much so it's still going to fit um, quite loosely but it probably would if I had been on gauge it probably would have been a lot more baggy um, yeah I'm really enjoying it like it's just very simple um, I watch TV at night with my husband and I can just knit away and watch TV. I'm lucky because I can actually knit without looking now so I'm pretty much I'm like a machine and I, I can pretty much just sit and knit and just watch TV and uh, yeah I get a lot of knitting done. Um, so yeah. 
So basically this will be knit to about, I think it's 15 inches or however long you want the body to be before you put the ribbing on. And I think the ribbing is about two inches or thereabouts. And then I have to do the sleeves. So yeah, it's still got quite a long way to go. I do like the little detail at the top, which is the, basically you pick up stitches here and that's the seam. So you're picking up stitches on the wrong side. So you have a visible seam along the shoulders. Um, yeah, really, it's just very, very, very basic design element, but I really quite like it. Uh, what else was I going to say? I think that's it. I know the pattern started with a provisional cast on. Oh no, not provisional, it was long tail cast on. And I almost skipped doing that because uh, I just, I, it's been a long time since I did one and I thought about doing just a cable cast on, which is what I always do. But then I decided I should stop doing that because I'm so comfortable with my knitting that I have um, techniques that I use all the time and then when something new comes I just think oh, oh I'll skip that it's quicker I'll do it just do it another way anyway I didn't do it do that this time and I'm so glad I didn't because the long tail cast on is actually super quick uh, you just got to make sure you have enough um, yarn for the tail because you're casting on and um, knitting the tail at the same time. I think it puts on an extra row when you do long tail. Anyway, it's really quick and I'm glad that I did it. So next time I come up with a technique that I don't know, I am definitely going to learn it. So this is a test knit by Hockey, Hockey Locatelli and yeah. The next work in progress is a vanilla sock and I really haven't done much on this at all. I showed this last week. Uh, oh, I don't believe it. I, the stitches have come off again. Hang on. I seriously need to buy some um, stitch holders. <sighs> it just keeps happening. I pull my knitting out and then the stitches come off the needles. Um, so this is the Hedro uh, yarn that I showed the same show last week. It's stunning. Um, it is the oh god, what's the colour? I can't believe I forgot it again. Um, yeah, I'll put it down below. I just can't remember it. Lupin, I think it is Lupin. Um, it's beautiful and I hope to get these socks done really soon. Oh my god, I've just realized my needle's broken. <gasps> oh bugger. Oh no. I'm not having much luck with my needles lately. Oh well, I'll have to get a new sock needle out. Oh, bugger. These actually have lasted a very long time so I'm quite amazed they haven't broken earlier. It will. I do have a finished object uh, this week. It is a cowl that I knit with some um, sample yarn that was sent uh, from the mill that we use. Uh, they sent us a skein of this super super chunky yarn. This is all I have left. Oh, that's really, it's not that bright in real life. Um, so it's sort of like a roving, pencil roving with um, a strand, or well, it's actually a two-ply strand of uh, merino. So it makes it this nice kind of chunky, wavy uh, consistency, or whatever you call it, <laughs> ply. Um, and yeah, so I I was debating whether to do a hat or a cowl and I looked online and I saw uh, the Marion cowl by Jane Richmond. It's a free pattern. So I cast on for that and I finished it. It was, this like took, I think I cast it on one afternoon when I came home from work 
and then I finished it the next day. So it, like I'd only just cast on and did maybe a row or two, put it aside and then finished it the next day and it took I think all up maybe an hour or two to knit. It's super chunky and it's super fast. Um, so that's it there. It's really, really nice. Um, I wanted something bright for winter, which this is. This is our Boom Shanker colorway, and it's like a, a sort of rich raspberry color. And what's really nice about it, particularly with this yarn, because it's a a bit of it's almost like it's roving. Um, it's dyed up so there's tiny little patches of bright pink. So it's not a completely uniform colour. It's got a little bit of tonal variation. Um, but yeah, I really like it. Uh, it's a free pattern, like I said, from Jane Richmond called Marianne and or Marion. And basically it's just um, seed stitch. So yeah. I used uh, what was 12 millimeter needles. The, the pattern called for 15 millimeter needles, which I don't have, and the 12 millimeters are the thickest ones I have, and they are really thick. In fact, it was so thick it was hurting my hands a little bit. Um, so what was I going to say? Um, oh yes, that's right. So she uses 15mm needles, which is why her sample looks a lot thicker than mine. I think hers is probably about that much thicker. Um, I also cast on 10 extra stitches than the pattern calls for because I couldn't find my cable, any cables. They seem to all be in use for my interchangeable needles because I, I think I used an 80 centimeter so I was trying to find something like a 60 centimeter cable and I, I didn't have it so the knitting didn't quite reach around the cable and I didn't want to magic loop it so I just cast on extra stitches so had I not done that it probably would have been a little bit thicker um, and I also that's what was left and I'm pretty sure I would have got another row but it's kind of hard to tell with this super thick yarn how much you actually have left. So I basically I test dyed the sample and I test knit it. I really really like it. I think it's going to be great for winter, great winter yarn. You can knit up really quick uh, gifts and uh, patterns. You could do cows, hats. I mean you could even do a jumper as well if you wanted to. Um, and yes you'd have it in no time at all. So I don't know what I'm going to call this yarn base yet, um, but I am going to get it in for the shop because I really like it. So yeah, one finished object. So the next segment is one that I'm going to call planning. So I have um, three different um, patterns, knitting patterns that I'm planning on making. Um, the first one is Marley. Oh, I'll just grab the yarn for that. So I've got the yarn. Uh, I'm going to be making the Marley shawl. This is by Andrea Maori, and I started. I had planned this to cast this on before we went away on holidays, and I know I mentioned this on the podcast before. So I'm going to be using uh, Manos. This is the Leo colorway. And this was gifted to me by Hohi when I met her last year. And I'm going to be teaming it up with a Republic of Wool, uh, which I bought at the beginning of the year. Uh, this is the Morph colorway. It's beautiful. So I think these will look really nice together. So the Mali uh, shawl is actually a brioche pattern. And I cast it on uh, before we left for our holidays yeah I um, I uh, just didn't have enough brain power to um, to do it I, I was trying to read the instructions for the brioche and it just really wasn't making sense but I just I don't think I was in the right mindset to uh, knit on it at that stage so I just put it down and I thought well I'll come back to it because I really want to really want to knit the shawl and I really want to try brioche 
So um, this is a definite uh, cast on that I'll be doing after I finish the test knit. Um, so who knows when I'll get to cast this on, but hopefully soon because I, I really can't wait. Uh, the second um, project that I'm planning is the Surprise Party Shawl by Helen Stewart, who is Curious Handmaid. Um, I have been dyeing up a whole heap of new colorways for the shop and so I have have like a set group of semi-solid colors and I thought it'd be fun every season to just kind of swap them around and add new colors and maybe bring back some old colors and yeah just sort of freshen it up every season uh, so I also had this idea because most of the knitting world is in the northern hemisphere and you guys are heading into winter whereas we're heading into summer and there's a lot of knitters in the southern hemisphere too so it's really hard to um, please both sides and particularly when you're in the southern hemisphere you know you want to promote knitting in this half of the world so what I ended up doing was uh, having two seasonal colours, so I have a winter and a summer range and I'm going to be releasing them on the 1st of December, which is only in a couple of weeks. So um, I decided that what I would do is uh, use a few of the colours, because this surprise party shawl, which I will put a picture up, uses five different mini skeins with a main colour. And I think I have in total about 20, 20 colours, new colours, that I'll be introducing to the shop. So I am going to pick five of them and test knit them. So this is sort of more for work, work knitting, but I really want to knit this shawl anyway, so um, it's great for me too. Uh, so yes, that's in the planning stages. I do actually have the minis ready. I have... I've been dyeing up all the new colours and I've, with every single colour, I've included two minis so I can actually have some set aside for me to refer back to. Um, so I can pinch a mini, because uh, I've got two minis, I'll keep one for work and then I'll put one into the pattern. So hopefully next time I speak to you guys next week I will have those colours picked out and I can show you what I'm going to knit. Uh, the final planning uh, project is the Portage, and I'm pretty sure that's how you say it, Portage uh, Cardigan. Um, this is by Melissa Sasha Swery. Sasha Swery, I think that's how you say her last name. Um, it's beautiful cardigan. I have yarn already dyed for it. This is actually our yarn too. Um, I wanted to test knit one of the new colours, so this is it. Uh, it is a very light sort of mauve colour. It's got pink undertones with sort of um, purpley grey overtones. I really, really like it. I've called this colour Sleeping, and this is a part of the summer colour range. Um, so I was looking last night on Ravelry while I was in bed uh, for a nice sweater or cardigan that I wanted to knit with this yarn and I saw this pattern and I just loved it. I love everybody's that I've seen on Ravelry. It seems to suit lots of people's uh, body shapes. So basically it's a knit, I'm pretty sure it's knit from the top down, I could be wrong, but I do know on the back of it there's like a um, honeycomb uh, all over cable pattern and then the front is plain but you have these uh, two sections that come down and then eventually turn into pockets at the bottom. Um, I really really like it. I like the length of it too. It's funny because I've gone from liking cardigans and shirts and things falling high hip to actually liking it a little bit longer. It, I think it's just um, the trend has changed and I sort of, yeah, I, I really like it, particularly in winter. 
um, you know, you want to keep your back nice and warm. Um, and they suit things like uh, skinny jeans and uh, that sort of thing. So, yeah, so I'll be casting that on soon once I finish my test knit and, and other things. So in the mail this week, I received uh, part of my birthday present, which was um, Indie Stitches. I was given an Indie Stitches gift voucher from my brother. And I picked one, two, three, four, five patterns that I'm very, very excited about. So I'll show you what they are. So it's sort of getting more into sewing now. Um, I chose a couple of top patterns because I find I wear lots of um, separates so um, shirts and tops are really handy. Um, so I got the Asta uh, Colette uh, shirt pattern. I hope you can see that. So there's lots of variations with this pattern which is great. So you've got the short sleeve, long sleeve and like a flared sleeve. Um, Again, I searched online when I was looking up this pattern and again, it suits lots of people. So I'm really keen to uh, sew this one up. I also got a Deer and Doe pattern, which is a dress. Um, what's it called? Arum. It's also, that's it there. It's also can be turned into a shirt. This is uh, using knits, and I really, really like sewing with knits, uh, jersey, and that, that type of thing. Um, I am dying to get a serger so I can finish them uh, a bit better, but I, I, I can do it with my machine, it's not a problem. Um, so this is uh, great for beginners, it says, which is great um, for me, and yeah, um, Really looking forward to sewing that one. It's just a nice little simple dress, which I think will be great for summer. And I've heard lots of good things about Deer and Doe. And actually, I opened one of the patterns up and I noticed that the pattern paper is this really nice thick paper, which I much prefer than that tissue paper, which I every time I use that tissue paper, I can't actually, I find it really hard to trace the, the lines. So yes, really happy with that. Um, the next pattern that I got is a Megan Nielsen pattern called Tanya. And this is, would you believe it, Colots, Which every time I hear Colots, I just think of the 90s and high school. And uh, it's so funny, they've come back again. But I, they are really comfortable. Um, so you can sort of have a skirt, but they're really pants. And I've seen these sewn up again. I checked on Pinterest and um, is it the green line and no, not the green line, the fold line and textilia. And there's lots of people who have made these and they look really, really nice. In fact, the middle length one is really nice. I've seen the, the short shorts. They look really cute too, but... I don't know if I'll be comfortable in those, but I quite like these ones, which kind of sit just above the knee. And what I really like about these too is it's got the high waist. So, and I really like her, how they've styled that. Um, I also got a Sewaholic pattern, which is the Hollyburn skirt. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. I, I wear lots of skirts like this, um, that again are high waisted and a little bit flared. So there's that. And then finally, I got another Deer and Doe pattern called the Melilo, uh, Melilo, yeah, pattern, uh, which is this one, the shirt pattern. And you got again the short and the long sleeves. You've got two types of collars that you can um, sew. So this is the one that I'm I am going to be sewing this weekend. I am going to be doing this one here with exactly that type of collar. Um, and I actually, after knitting group today, I went and bought some um, fabric, which I'll just grab some of the floor. 
I bought fabric and buttons, but then I realised that the buttons, I don't have enough of them, so I'm going to have to go back and get more. So this is the fabric. Just to find... So it's like, <laughs> it's really like quite busy, but I really liked it. It's sort of, I don't know if you can see, but it's got these little triangles of uh, blue and red and there's a lot going on. <laughs> but I think it would be really cute with that shirt because I, I don't know, it sort of has this oriental look about it with that collar and I just... I don't know, I saw it and I, I hope it works. We shall, we shall soon see. It's a, uh, it's just a cotton and yeah. Oh, and the buttons, I've got these buttons to go with it. Yeah. So they're like little metal buttons, yeah. But yes, I'll have to go buy another packet. So yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, I don't think this shirt will be as hard as the last one. Um, because the last one actually had sleeves. Which I don't actually mind putting sleeves in. But this pattern, as you can see here and on the back, the schematic, there is no sleeve. So it's cut out in one complete piece. So the sleeves are already attached to the body. So it should be pretty good. There's some darts, which I haven't done for a very long time. That's at the bust. And uh, pockets. So, yeah. I shall hopefully have something to show you next week. And that's pretty much all for this week. Um, I feel like I've sped through everything really quickly. Um, yeah, but anyway, I hope you're all well, and again, I will see you next week. Um, I hope you get lots of knitting done, and lots of sewing, and whatever you're into. I hope you're relaxing and enjoying it. So yes, I'll see you next week, and take care. Until then, bye!